Okay, so step one is uh, just removing all the screws from the back of the speaker. I've left the testing microphone set up where it is uh, so that I can reposition the speaker after I finish changing the crossover and have the mic in exactly the same spot and the speaker exactly in the same spot. So uh, this is just getting the back this off. taking the back off. Uh, and you may be wondering about these two pieces of, of um, tape. I have some gaffers tape that I'm using here and I was using them just to seal the edges of the cabinet when I was doing some other testing. Um, so for now, this is just what we have. We removed the uh, panel. So um, you can see here we have, we'll have to unhook the uh, leads there so I can uh, get to this crossover. Here's the crossover. So now I've removed the speaker, the wire connectors that go to the speaker terminal. The speaker terminal sitting over here and got the uh, back plate off. So there's where I'm at right now. Okay, so now I'm disconnecting the speakers. Um, I could have just disconnected the speaker connector, the main connector over here, just as easily, because uh, I kind of forgot about this. So, so I've got to do, that. I've have to disconnect the speakers at the crossover, so I, I can pull the board off. I'm going to be uh, unscrewing the crossover from the speaker using that screw right there in the center of the picture. It's holding on, and then there's another one over here. Okay, so now the next process is just going to be take off the crossover. Uh, out of the cabinet so that I can change out those big capacitors right there. Okay, so now I've removed the uh, crossover network which is mounted on this board um, and it just took removal of those two screws and it's it's out and it's free now to take back and work on and now uh, then we'll unscrew these two capacitors, clip them off and replace those two capacitors with the new ones I got from Bob Kreitz that are sauna caps that are that are not uh, old capacitors like these are. These are would be if the speaker was manufactured in 1980, then obviously they're pretty old. Uh, Bob also sent me some new um, um, gaskets for the mid-range driver, so I'm unscrewing the mid-range driver. It's disconnected, and so I can replace the uh, those gaskets that are on it. So here's the uh, mid-range driver removed and that gasket is indeed very brittle and may not be sealing like it used to. So it'll probably be a good idea to replace that gasket. Okay, so um, here's the old gasket. It's uh, not quite as brittle as I thought. It's probably still actually sealing, but it's a good idea to do these down anyway. And uh, this nice new fresh supple gasket will uh, ensure that it's not we're not getting any kind of leaks around the opening. Okay, so this next stage, this next stage now is um, I'm heating up the the uh, soldering iron and uh, over here I've got the crossover laid out and getting ready to clip the leads on this on these uh, two capacitors and take them off. Now that I've clipped the leads I'm thinking yeah I need to make sure that I'm looking at Bob's uh, diagram because there's I want to make sure that the same wires are hooked up properly on the capacitors. Obviously, this one came from this compa these two came from this capacitor, so I'm leaving those over there, and then these two over here. But I, I should check the uh, the schematic, make sure everything's wired up correctly. So now I'm unscrewing the two capacitors. In the process of doing that. The capacitors I just removed of the of the two. Shows where it was. Okay, so now, now I'm going to strip the leads uh, on these wires so that I can solder them to the wires coming out of the sauna caps. The um, leads are all disconnected and they're ready to be soldered together. And then I'll put a little bit of tape on there too just to make sure they don't uh, crisscross path. So here I've got not one but two uh, alligator clips to use as a heat sink to protect the uh, sauna cap and I'm getting ready to do my first solder right here. So I'm about to do the soldering And we'll see how that goes. Okay. I did my first solder joint here It's not the most beautiful solder job ever, but I don't think I messed anything up And I'll trim off the excess wire in a moment and then I'm going to do that on all of these uh, the takeaway from soldering is to uh, use the soldering iron to heat up the 
the components that are going together, like in this case the wires, heat up the wires and then just allow the solder to flow onto the wires rather than trying to heat up the solder. So that's the way you use your soldering iron. I finished the soldering and although I know I've done better job soldering, I think these solder joints will hold probably for many years. And I'll wrap them with some tape next just to make sure nothing crosses path. And then we'll just put this board back in the speaker and do some testing. Okay, so I've got the uh, little insulation on here, just a tape wrap, which is also kind of clumsy looking, but it ought to serve the job. So the next thing is uh, just wire these in the speaker and do some testing. All right, so here's the crossover network, and I'm getting ready to put it back in to the speaker box, and then we'll put everything back together again. Now the crossover is back in and the next step is going to be just to connect up uh, like the woofer to the woofer connection and the mid-range squawker to the squawker connection and the tweeter to the tweeter. Okay, so everything's connected back up. All the speaker wires are connected, proper driver wires to the crossover and the main connection. So now it's just time put the uh, back on the speaker again. Okay, you got the speaker put back together. There's that horrible grill. That, that's the next project is work on cosmetic fixing that grill. And I'm gonna double check with some tape measure, make sure I still have this microphone in about the right place too. 